May 13th, and today I'll be reading Glory B, chapters 20 and 21. Both of these chapters are very short, so this video should be pretty short, not too long. Today's objective, students will be able to make inferences while reading a story, and I know we've practiced this skill many times before, but it's very important you still watch my videos so you know what's happening in our story. Your DOL, students will identify what the text says, combine it with what they know to make an inference about events in the story. So like I said, you still need to watch my videos because you need to understand what the characters are doing in our story and you need to know what's going on in our story. So it's very important that you watch my videos. Today I wanna to teach you how to make an inference as we read. Here are the following steps you can take. One, read the text and pay attention to key details. Two, what do I already know about situations like this, so your background knowledge? And three, make your inference. So you're just combining what you read with what you know. Chapter 20 of Glory Be, and I'll be focusing on glory today. If I live to be a hundred. Laura came to my house the next morning saying Miss Bloom needed us to help at the library. I grabbed her hand and headed out the front door. The pool is opening up, maybe today. Let's go see the new sign. We headed for the library by the by way of the community pool. I was talking nonstop about my pool party in five more days and how we'd have water balloon races and eat orange snow cones and Emma's special cake and how much I hoped she'd come. But when I saw Jesslyn and Robbie at the pool, I stopped dead still. Jesslyn squinted across the sidewalk at me. My heart sped up when I thought about Robbie's secret I'd blab to Frankie, but Frankie was nowhere in sight. Maybe I was safe for now. Jesslyn stood in front of the pool sign with one hand on her hip and her nose wrinkled up. A few kids in bathing suits dry as a bone held rolled up towels and elbowed each other. Inside the fence, nobody was splashing, belly flopping, or playing loud radios. What's happening, I asked Jesslyn. Is the pool open or do we have to wait until July 4th to swim? We have to wait longer than that. She pointed to the sign that said, pool closed until further notice. My stomach tied itself in a knot bigger than those dry towels. Further notice? What's that mean? That's a mistake for sure. We were here yesterday. If it's not open yet, it will be soon. Jesslyn said, just like that busy body Mrs. Simpson told us, it was a lie that the pool would open. Nobody's admitting to putting up that sign yesterday about the pool opening. Maybe it was a trick. Robbie leaned against the fence, staring inside. Your friend Frankie has a mean streak in him. He's the one who pulled a prank. Frankie? I looked up at a new sign. He did it? As a joke I heard just now, Robbie shrugged his shoulders. Some people said his brother JT dared him. I took a deep breath, smelling the chlorine and the coconut suntan lotion, trying to remember hot dogs frying on the snack bar grill and the lifeguard's whistles. I stood between Jesslyn and Laura with the warm sunshine beating down on my neck. You remember last July 4th? I asked Jesslyn, the watermelon race? Me and you and Frankie and our cousins at my birthday party? And that cake you and Emma made me shaped like a cat, remember? They weren't really questions I was asking Jesslyn, I just needed us to remember. I'm sorry, Glory, Laura said. I don't think the com pool committee is worried about your birthday, was all Jesslyn said. Here I was sure that one little part of this town had changed, that maybe people like Frankie's daddy finally got together to decide opening the pool up for everybody just in time for a 4th of July celebration was the kind of thing you should do on our country's birthday. But I was wrong. My thinking was all mixed up. A lot of things are different this summer, Glory, Jesslyn said. The corners of her mouth turned down like maybe she wished it was last summer, including your friend. How could Frankie think tricking us into believing the pool was opening is funny, I asked. Jesslyn shook her head and walked off with Robbie. When I peered through the, those hard metal fence links at the bluest, cleanest water, I was so mad I wanted to spit. I vowed to never speak to that hateful Frankfurter Smith if I lived to be a hundred. Right, so now we left off with Glory not being too happy about Frankie's prank on putting that sign up on the community pool that it was open. Chapter 21, Bald-Faced Lie. Two days later, when Frankie showed up at our kitchen door busting his britches to tell me something, I ignored him. Emma and I were reading Nancy Drew together and searching for clues in the old clock. Emma looked up once and shook her head. 
then turned to the next chapter. It was the 1st of July, and even though I was happy that my birthday month was here, I was still red-hot mad at Frankie. I wasn't speaking to him, no matter how hard he knocked at my door. Open up, Glory. I've got something to tell you. I know what you did, I yelled back. Get out of here, Frankie. I took my reading. I took to reading my chapter to Emma even louder. I didn't do anything. Frankie pushed open the door and scooted his chair next to the kitchen table, but he wouldn't look straight at me. I slammed the book shot and moved as far away from him as I could. It was you who put up that fake sign about the pool opening. I'm not talking to you. Emma stood and laid our book carefully on the shelf next to her cookbooks. She didn't turn to face us. Even with her back turned, I could tell she was listening by the way her shoulders hunched up. I didn't do anything, but your friend, that Yankee, did something bad. She's in trouble. Frankie looked around the kitchen. She's not here, is she? That Laura girl? She and some of them other freedom people committed a crime. A crime? What are you talking about? I asked. Laura broke into the pool and stole something. That's a bald-faced lie, Frankfurter Smith. Frankie leaned up close. His voice got quieter. Somebody went over there last night and messed with the pool lockers, and they took candy from the snack bar. Laura and her friends did it. You're a loony, Frankie. Laura wouldn't do that. Well, she did. They found one of her dumb black socks dropped on the dressing room floor. He pushed his glasses up on his nose and slicked back his hair. Looked me straight in the eye like he was telling the gospel truth. You know how you're always trying to get her to take those ugly socks off and go barefooted? This time, your stupid friend did take her off her socks. Emma spoke up quietly without turning around. Frankie, mind your manners. Glory's friend Laura wouldn't hurt a flea. Yeah, Frankie, Laura wouldn't break into any old lockers. You're making that up, I said. You're telling a lie. Your Yankee friend's in big trouble. There's a police car over there now. Come see for yourself if you don't believe me. Frankie took a step toward the black door just as Emma turned around fast. Emma put her hand on my shoulder. Brother Joe will skin you alive, getting mixed up in the mess. You're staying put, Glory. We won't be gone long, Miss Emma, Frankie said. We'll just ride our bike slow so Glory can see. My daddy's there. We'll be okay. Emma shook her head. No, Glory's not going. That's that. She turned her back again to take out peaches, flour, and sugar for a pie. She started peeling the peaches. I needed to prove Frankie was lying. I was even willing to risk getting skinned alive by Brother Joe and peeled like a peach by Emma. I hightailed it out of there before Emma turned around to stop me. When we parked our bikes in front of the pool, Frankie had a goofy smile on his face. Across the street was a policeman taking, talking to his daddy. Mr. Smith had both hands on his hips and his legs wide apart. He looked like he was ready to slap somebody good. He walked right in the pool gate and slammed it hard behind him, rattling, rattling the pool clothes sign. Frankie said, see, daddy's talking to a policeman, didn't I tell you? Tell me what? I don't believe a word you say. Laura wouldn't break into this pool. You don't know anything. But when I saw the policeman holding up Laura's black sock, I got an awful feeling about the whole mess. So now I'm going to make an inference by, one, rereading the text, paying attention to the details. Um, on page 137 in the text, it says Gloria is ignoring Frankie. In fact, that she starts reading louder to Emma to block him out. What do I know about situations like this? So now I'm connecting it to my own life, Miss Troya's life. Well, I know if I ignore someone or pretend they aren't there, I'm probably pretty mad at them. And I'm sure all of you at one point in your life wanted to ignore someone or have ignored someone, maybe a sibling. I know I can think back to times when I tried to ignore my sister. Now I can make my inference by taking the text evidence of glory speaking louder to ignore frankie plus what i know about ignoring people and being mad at them and well from the text said and from what i know i can infer that glory is very angry with frankie and doesn't want to have anything to do with him anymore so students you just saw how paying attention to what the text says and then using my background knowledge made it possible for me to make an inference so now it's your turn you're going to reread the text paying attention to details and the text evidence I chose was after all of this information about the pool not, not being open and Frankie blaming Laura. In the text, it says Frankie had a goofy smile on his face. What can you infer about this? 
So you'll combine your background knowledge with the text evidence to come up with an inference about Frankie and why you think he has this goofy look on his face. Okay, I hope you have a great Wednesday.